Ian, when it comes to reading and writing, what do you prefer, science fiction or fiction? Um, well, I tend to read more or less for a write, in the sense that um, I read about 50-50 sort of mainstream science fiction, and uh, so it's more or less all fiction of some sort. Um, I try to read a few more um, sort of popular science books these days, just to sort of keep up with what's going on, you know. Um, although I still think reading New Scientist is probably enough by itself, but uh, it's well to check these things out in more depth. Uh, Writing-wise, I probably prefer to write the science fiction. There's not a great deal in it, but uh, the science fiction is more sort of, um, well, self-indulgent would be the um, more sort of uh, pejorative sort of definition of it, as it was. Have you ever thought of sticking to one of the genres that you think you could do more justice to, rather than alternating between science fiction and fiction? Uh, it's something that's been suggested, but I think I just get bored, frankly. Um, I quite enjoy being able to switch between the two, and it gives me sufficient um, variety, really, so that uh, I'm always doing something, something different from the last book. I think that's the point. If we take a look at some of the themes in the books, like sex and death in the Wasp Factory or the Crow Road, drink and illegal substances in Espadare Street, or cults, as in the book Wit, how autobiographical are your books? Uh, I try not to be autobiographical at all, if I can possibly avoid it. Uh, there are very sort of, small bits of autobiography in several of the novels. I mean, um, they tend to be very sort of, small details. There's a bit towards the end of the Wasp Factory uh, where Frank sees some horses in the field and uh, one of the horses is taken away in a um, container or whatever and the other one sort of runs around for, for a while. That's kind of an image of loss, whatever. And that came from real life. Similarly, in the, it's a bit in uh, the Crow Road where uh, Prentice, our hero, remembers thinking that he can influence television sets by humming um, before finally working out he's simply humming at a certain um, frequency that uh, allows him to vibrate his eyeballs so that he's basically he's vibrating his eyeballs at the same sort of refresh rate as the screen is going at. So um, in fact the, the whole sort of, uh, effect is inside his head. Uh, I'm trying to use that obviously as a you know, sort of symbol for um, belief or faith, whatever. Uh, and that was um, from reality. I remember sitting watching, sitting on the couch with my mum and dad watching like Top of the Pops or something about 25 years ago and thinking I could sort of affect the television by humming. So there's wee sort of little things, small details, well, that's about it. How do you feel about your books being adapted for film? Writing's a very personal vision. When someone else channels it through their own ideas, the theme becomes a different proposition. Uh, well, I guess from the fact that you know we I do sort of I do sign contracts to let people do this. So I can't be too bothered about it. Um, I think the way to, to treat it is uh, first of all, don't count your chickens. Um, there's one thing I've learned about film and TV, well, particularly film, really, is that uh, a film's not actually you know it's not going to happen until it's actually been made. And even once it's been made, it still might not sort of uh, fully happen. So. Uh, Take it all with a, about a container of lorry load of salt, for one thing. Uh, but also, it's I don't take any responsibility for you know, uh, adaptations of the work. I mean, you, you can, as a writer, you I, well, I take full responsibility for the novel itself, but my responsibility ends there. So if it's a triumph, it's not really my triumph. If they make a wonderful film or TV series or whatever, then you know I might, I'm sort of quietly pleased that I helped in, to inspire it, but I didn't actually do anything uh, uh, to make it happen. So um, I think it's leaving the. So we're taking the hands-on approach, put it that way. Have you ever harboured ideas of filmmaking? Uh, I think filmmaking sounds like hard work, quite frankly. You know, um, I've got spoiled over the years just being able to write, write novels. It's, it's relatively easy and you don't have to like, compromise, really. You just, you're your own boss, whereas uh, filmmaking, even if you're the director, you know, and even given that Orson Welles said it's you know, the best the best train set a boy could have. Um, it sounds too much like you've got to compromise, you've got to take other people's views on board, and uh, um, it's too much of a team effort. I'm not really a team player, I'm, I'm more of a, you know, so I'll, just do, I'll do it myself, thank you. I read an interesting quote quite recently, and you said, you get used to being called God, you're very spoilt as a novelist. Did you say this because being an author, you're in a way a divine creator? Yeah, that's kind of what the last answer was about. You do get used to um, playing the part of God in the sense that you have complete control over the characters involved. Whereas with uh, with films, I say, um, especially when you're when you're the writer, when you're the writer um, you know, of a film, of a script, you really you're at the beginning of the process, not the end, and that makes all the difference. So yeah, you get spoiled in a novel. You get used to being being God, basically. Do you write books separately, or do you write the science fiction and the fiction books at the same time? They're written one at a time. <laughs> uh, I don't sort of write you know, two, 
at one go, you know, sort of. Uh, I did try that once, actually. I did once try to write two, uh, two stories, two novels at the one time. But I think one, it was a bit like sort of uh, Cuckoo in the Nest situation. The stronger one won out. It sort of toughed the, the weaker one, you know, <laughs> down to the, the uncaring fangs below. Um, so I have tried doing that, it doesn't work. Do you find that writing science fiction gives you more of a license for your imagination to take over, rather than the narrower confines of fiction? Yeah, I mean, if you do it right, then there are, there are no narrow confines to fiction. But um, you know, there are certain ways of, of doing things, there are certain uh, ideas, and uh, you can tackle in science fiction much more easily than you can in, in mainstream fiction. Um, and yes, but it kind of goes back to the first question about you know, which type of fair writing, and it, it, it is by a, a, you know, a short head. It's science fiction just because you can. I think it's because um, the things that are. Uh, constants in mainstream fiction become variables in science fiction. Uh, you can alter human nature, you can actually have not humans, you can have alien nature, you can even alter the laws of the universe, Jim. The US market has been more accepting of your science fiction rather than your fiction. Why do you think this is? Uh, I think science fiction in general is, is um, better regarded in, in America. I think it's not quite the same as snobbery as it is perhaps here. Uh, certainly, I think all the science fiction novels have been published in America, but not all the mainstream. Um, I think just down to the fact there's lots of uh, very good American writers who are producing exactly what the American book buying public wants to read. And if you're not sort of keyed into that, you know, sort of zeitgeist, then you're not going to do it. Whereas, uh, I think I'm a bit more sort of keyed into, you know, our, our zeitgeist, our, our sort of... Um, our sort of background, our cultural sort of milieu, if you like. Ian, thank you so much. Yeah, welcome.